Hi, it's me, Bob, back here again to bring you another eye-popping build, which is possibly a crime against humanity, or at least a war crime, both of which are not a violation for Riot Games' terms of service, according to all Riot legal entities aside from Brazil. So we're in the clear, boys! As I wanted to capture the spirits of the average North American commuter, who is often living a constant shitty life of despair, always in fear that their bike might get stolen, or stressing over other forms of transportation due to their superiority in speed, durability, and dedicated infrastructure, or worrying about wind speeds, as winds above 8km per hour in any direction will result in you either stalling or losing control entirely, and I found the easiest way to accomplish this is to play Rail, as her attitude best resembles the everyday commuter, but Rail's edgy sad and depressive attitude alone I'm the happiest girl in the world isn't going to carry your damn ass instead it's her kid's ability to completely zone the enemy bot lane away from the minion wave at level 1 by simply sitting this bush but I don't just want to strip the enemy of the golden experience as after denying the enemy of their pensions and subsidies you should hit level 2 allowing you to then engage and completely demolishing their hopes and dreams though this in theory does sound nice but you will need a competent ADC who knows how to supervise these hooded midgets so they don't crash right outside of tower range, avoiding all advantages that you might have had, making it so that this build requires some decent social structure, hence the name Commuter Rail. But if you are playing it properly, you will drop the enemy's bottling's will to live by so much that they might just be able to convince the other person on the suicide hotline to also commit seppuku, thus creating a chain reaction, effectively committing the aforementioned crime against humanity. Based on the fact that Riot allowed a champion who's this obnoxious and often to play both as, with, or against into the game, I can only assume that they hate their player base, and enjoy seeing players get visibly frustrated, as I also take joy at others' misery, you bet I am going to take full advantage of her kid. First, Rail passive, break the mode, it is literally a shitty trundle ult, but smack onto an auto attack, Rail Q is called shattering strike, Rail stabs in a line, shattering all shooting effects, then for some reason, also heals her tethered ally based on the amount of champions hit. Next, is her W, the 2 in 1 deal, crash down and mount up, it literally does what the name implies, Rel leaps into the air then crashes down with a shield and knocking up all nearby enemies on the landing site, and same with mount up, she mounts up and primes an empowered auto attack that flips the target, Rel E is what makes Rel into the soul crushing champion that she is, and this ability alone is the absolute pinnacle of zone control, beating out gods like Anivia, aids like Malzahar, or Robobitch, as you can create a 1500 unit wall, which is literally the entire mid lane or the distance between you and the nearest McDonald's, allowing you to stun anyone who's dumb enough to be caught in the wall for one second, which is all the time that it takes for an ADC to go poof, so you will be learning this at level 1 to be able to completely zone the enemy off the minion wave, and according to the International Committee of the Red Cross, Article 54 1 of the 1977 Additional Protocol 1 provides, starvation of civilians as a method of warfare is prohibited, thus effectively committing the aforementioned war crime. Last but least, Rails are we For runes, you will be taking what every tank support is running nowadays, that means something like this, be sure to take both basic hit delivery and time or pranic, so you can stick to the enemy while dismounted, causing them to sink deeper and deeper into their already life altering illness, as no functional human being will resort to playing League of Legends as anything but a form of self deprecation This build allows you to run a variety of summoner spells, by that I mean you have two options, either ghost or ignite, and of course flash, because we're goddamn flash abusers here on twitch.tv backslash b-o-b-p-r-o-d-u-c-t-i-o-n-z, live whenever my crippling depression kicks now in. Now onto items, start the game off with a relic shield and two reds, as one is for your welfare fund and the other one is your placeholder for your core item, then rush boots, as you're slow as fuck when demounted, then build it into boost of swiftness, as it gives the most movement speed out of all tier 2 boots, and I am not telling you to buy mobies, because your W mount up is already free mobies, and this is not redundant jungler gin. Next, buy a cropping potion, as this item effectively gives you 375 health and 225 mana, which is an effective gold value of 1001.25 gold, making cropping pot a 200 63.25% value purchase, which is coincidentally the same value deal that you would get with McDonald's extra value Big Mac meal at 498 USD. And as a commuter, you'll need all the cost savings that you can possibly get. This is the core item in your build, and without it, you will need to go back to base and restock. If you remember back when I was talking about runes, you will recall that I told you to take time with tonic, which means that every charge of crumbly motion will act as an on-demand triumph, healing you for a small bit of health, as well as speeding you up. Up to this point, it actually looks like it's so 
somewhat regular rail build, but this is where you turn it around and trick the less intelligent league players into thinking that you're retarded by building an Imperial Mandate. Little did you know that Imperial Mandate is the only remaining mythic that still gives 15 ability power per complete item, as well as being the most non-conditional cost-effective support mythics. And if I still haven't stressed it enough, this build is meant to give you a feel on what it's like to be a commuter, squeezing the most out of every penny that you get for your emotional labor. As why else will you be getting 2.04 gold per second? Next, you'll be buying Zeke's conversions, because his damage stacks extremely well with Mandate, and it allows you to get a maximum damage out of your W, E, and R. Finally, top off your build with Rendu and Zoman, since if the game hasn't ended by now, I can only assume that the enemy ADC managed to pick up a few random kills here and there, so you will need to be able to crush your spirits further, as with the press of a button, you'll now be able to reduce 20% of their attack damage and 20% crit damage. Okay, I'm done. Check out Cyclist Clad if you haven't, and this video's over.